What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about the top 10 reasons to move to Canada. Reasons to move to Canada. I've been learning quite a bit about Canada recently, and there's a lot of reasons to move to Canada from what I've seen, like truthfully. Uh, <laughs> uh, not just because of all the, the maple syrup, the endless maple syrup, and <laughs> the nice people, uh, the wonderful places to visit. Actually, those are all pretty good reasons to move to Canada, now that I think of it. <laughs> but I'm more interested in what this list thinks are the top, top reasons to move to Canada. Because there's a lot of reasons, but I want to know what maybe some of the most uh, interesting or not obvious, or, or maybe it, everything on this list will just be the different maple syrup flavored stuff. Maybe that's just 10 reasons to move to Canada all on its own. I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, I'm ready to find out. So let's find out. Number 10, multiculturalism. Suffice it to say that we... Multiculturalism. Multiculturalism. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's actually hard to say. Uh, it's a good reason. Um, as an American, that's something we actually have quite a fair bit of in America. So, honestly, this is probably one of the things I can re could relate to the most on this list. So that's a good reason to, to live in America. It's a good reason to live in Canada. A lot of diversity, lots of cultures going on, lots to learn and appreciate. So, yeah, I get it. We adopted a policy of multiculturalism as opposed to the melting pot of your American model. Visit any major city in Canada, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and you'll feel like you're taking a tour of more than just one country. Oh, okay. See, that's, a, that's kind of a better way of putting it, actually. You can go to all these major cities and places and feel like... Oh, you're getting an experience of the culture of, of many different cultures in the city. Like, uh, instead of just necessarily like, oh, this is Canada. It's like, yeah, it's Canada, but it's also a lot of other things. Neighborhoods like Chinatown and Little Italy, and even a Korea town in Toronto, can okay. be found in those major cities and provide an immersive cultural experience for tourists and natives alike. But cool. every nationality and background imaginable is spread out throughout the cities, too. Nothing's absolute. But when it comes down to it, most Canadians aren't afraid of diversity. In Canada, people don't cool. care where you're from. As long as you're friendly and, and maybe loan them a smoke or hand <laughs> over a donut. In fact... Hey, that's uh, that was supposed to be funny, but it's like, hey, I, I agree with that. As long as you're friendly, uh, it's all good. Like, yeah, we're all people. In 2015 and 2016, Canada, under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, welcomed 25,000 Syrian refugees into the country. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of the PM, Trudeau's cabinet proved to be the most diverse ever seen in Canadian politics, having an equal cool. number of men and women, some minorities, and even former refugees. Why was that so important to you? Cool. Because it's 2015. Number nine, <laughs> abundant natural resources. Abundant, abundant natural resources. Are we, are we talking about like the economic strength of Canada here? Like I want to join Canada and move there so that I can be part of like this flourishing nation with all these natural resources. Or are we talking about like, because it has beautiful nature that you can appreciate lakes and stuff. Did you know that without its freshwater lakes, Canada would actually be smaller than the United States? Or that Canada wow. holds 7% of... So that's saying there are a lot of lakes, to say the least. ...the world's renewable water supply. The third dates... Oh, hold on. Or that Canada holds 7% of the world's renewable water supply. Wow. The third highest next to Brazil and Russia. Wow. That's because the country is known for its beautiful scenery, with too mm. many lakes, streams, rivers, and wetlands to count. Not to mention the fact that the Northern Territories are mostly snow and ice. In addition- I mean, the, it's a very surface level way to analyze things, but it's important actually. Like, that Canada is beautiful is like, that's a good reason to want to live there. It's above the surface level of like, oh, that's pretty. It's like, it increases your overall 
you know, honestly, your health, your mental attitude, your, like, mental health, seeing, like, that you're living in a beautiful place with, hopefully, you know, lots of beautiful people and all that. Addition. Canada has no shortage of gold. Beautiful as... <laughs> I just thought about what I just said. Beautiful people as in beautiful, like, <laughs> culturally. On the inside. <laughs> Not that the people have to be supermodels, although if Canada is filled with <laughs> if Canada is filled with a bunch of supermodels, everyone, every single person in Canada is just beautiful. Like <laughs> that's good too. You know, I'm happy for you. Nickel, diamonds, lead, and crude oil, which means other countries look to Canada for exports of natural resources. Yeah, I was thinking about this, like, we're also talking about natural resources, like oil, lead, things like that, that actually is more for the economy, like, financial strength. Thus helping Canada's economy to thrive. Yeah. Number eight, it's not yet overpopulated. Oh, really? Well, when was this made? When was this video made? Oh my goodness, four, six years ago. Is Canada overpopulated <laughs> now? It's 2022 at the time of this video. So, uh, six years have gone by. I wonder if Canada's still not too overpopulated. Like, the just right, where you can go to the grocery store and you're not, like, packed against the wall, like, stuffed like sardines or something. Non-Canadian citizens asked to name places in Canada will come up with well-known cities like Toronto and Montreal, but mm. often know next to nothing about the rest of the country. That's absolutely true, by the way. Americans, <laughs> they know, they are aware of Montreal, Quebec, uh, Toronto, but like nothing else. Not, not no, sorry. <laughs> what might make this difficult is that out of the 36 million or so people residing in the country, only about two and a half. 36 million people. That's almost like one tenth of the American population. So yeah, it's like what? 10% of the people in America. Like, that's very interesting. Half million make up the 36 million or so people residing in the country. Only about two and a half million make up the population of Nunavut, the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, wow. Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. Wow. To put that in perspective, there are 13 million people living just in the province of Ontario. Right. The cities may be crowded, so the cities, yeah, exactly. The cities are very population dense, but if you move to some sort of town or, pl or place in Canada that's not right smack in the middle of a city, you're probably going to have like a very comfortable kind of hometown feeling where the population is very tame, everyone's kind of familiar with everyone there probably. It's probably very comforting, very homey. I like that. But when you think of Canada as a whole, there's still plenty of unused space, especially mm. in the lesser populated areas further north. Nunavut huh. is authentic Arctic. It's got a culture that is still thriving. Number seven, cool. hockey. Hockey, 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 hockey. Americans, you know, enjoy hockey. There's a professional hockey league in America. It's just nowhere even close to what Americans like obsession with uh, American football and basketball, but hockey's like super cool. Like I love that Canada is obsessed with hockey because <laughs> it's like from an American's point of view, that's unique. That's a sport we don't really give enough attention to. As long as there's ice to skate on, we're at home. Here's one stereotype that isn't so exaggerated after all. Uh -huh. Canadians love their hockey. You okay. got your can of do's, and you got your can of don'ts. Top shelf right there, number one. Home. That is, this, is, this is something Americans really do associate with Canada. Uh, hockey, and it sounds like it's kind of the truth. You go telling a Canadian you don't follow hockey. <laughs> Contrary to the stereotype, not everyone actually plays the sport. Okay. But when there's a game on TV, you know what many Canadians will be doing. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly like American football basketball, exact same way. From the Vancouver Canucks to the Montreal Canadiens, some follow the NHL almost religiously. Can we watch hockey? Uh, well, the game's over, sweetheart. Canadians won, by the way, so you owe me 10 bucks. Canada may <laughs> be known as a nice and quiet country, but nothing can prepare you to see them after a hockey game is aired. When a Canadian uh -huh. team loses, riots. 
when a Canadian. Oh man, the only time, <laughs> the only time an American is gonna see news coverage or something of uh, an aggressive, angry Canadian, which I've never seen ever, <laughs> is uh, after losing a big hockey match. Okay, good to know. Steer clear of the Canadian hockey fans <laughs> if they just lost a big match. Okay, good tip. Team wins, more riots. Needless to say, Canadians take their hockey very seriously. Yeah. Number six, Canada's reputation. Hmm, interesting one. Canada's reputation. I mean, from America, Canada's reputation is very good. Very good reputation, just of being very kind, loving people that like really neat stuff. Um, our thought process doesn't really go much further than that, to be honest. I don't live in an igloo or eat blubber or own a dog sled. And I don't know Jimmy, Sally, or Susie from Canada, although I'm certain they're really, really nice. <laughs> Movies and TV shows have a habit of misrepresenting, or at least grossly exaggerating Canadian stereotypes. That, I believe, is absolutely 100% true in America. <laughs> you bumped into him, and he apologized and gave you a donut on the hose? Oh, it's just like home. And while it's <laughs> unlikely that you'll see Canadians actually slather maple syrup on everything, <laughs> where do you pour the syrup? Or end every sentence with A, they're hardly gonna hold a grudge over these stereotypes. A. A, yeah, A. That's another <laughs> thing that Americans think Canadians say a lot. A, but apparently not as much as we think. Because, you know, that's their deal. I moved here from Canada and they think I'm slow, eh? In fact, Canadians typically find rumors that they live in igloos or ride polar bears very amusing. <laughs> I hope so. I really do hope so. Uh, I would think... I'd love to hear what Canadians think Americans are up to and doing. What kind of crazy stuff? I would what kind even American stereotypes. I would find that stuff so funny. That would be so funny to me. So I'm glad. I hope Canadians really do look at that with a sense of humor. Since most have never seen a wild polar bear in their life and probably right. never will. Freaking polar bears. Polar bears. You didn't hear about the polar bear? Number 5. Low violence and crime rates. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great reason to move to Canada. Maybe one of the best on this list so far. If you're going to pick a place to live, certainly low crime and rates of violence is a fantastic reason. And it also just reflects so well on the Canadian culture, you know? You don't get those low violence statistics unless as a as a people as a nation it's the truth it reflects the truth in the behavior of that uh nation i'd love to leave my door unlocked when i leave the house but this ain't canada no one's naive enough to believe that canada however friendly is without violence and crime sure there are all too often incidents of theft homicide and abductions across the country but canada looks like disneyland compared to crime rates in other countries yeah i was gonna say depending on where you live in america you can find some pretty staggering rates of crime and violence. But then, of course, there's parts of America that are wonderful with incredibly low crime rates. Just super peaceful places to live, you know, like anywhere. Like anywhere in the world, you can find both, right? You guys are the world's leader in handgun violence. Your healthcare system is bankrupt. And your country is deeply divided on almost every important issue. Yeah. Your cops are called Mounties. <laughs> For instance, in 2010, there were 554 cases of murder in Canada, compared to a whopping oh. 12,000 or so in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, wow. 500? 54 cases. Yeah, and if that was, if you multiply that by 10, that'd only be 10,000. Cases of murder in Canada, compared... And so America has 12,000, so it's over, if I'm doing the math somewhat correctly... It's over, like, what the population difference would predict. So America is a little more, like, violent on average, it would seem. Compared to a whopping 12,000 or so in the U.S., around 25,000 in Mexico, wow. and at the top of the list, Brazil, with approximately wow. 40,000. Okay, maybe America isn't so bad. 
<laughs> Canada may not be perfect when it comes to violent crime, but what country is? There may be some yeah. bad eggs living among them, but for the most part, Canada has no room for hate in its heart. I forgot yeah. you guys don't have that in Canada. Number four, balanced politics. Really? That's a bold statement. Or I guess we're saying balanced politics, not that everyone in Canada necessarily is to in total agreement on the politics, but maybe there's like a much healthier balance and everyone is kind of closer together on average in the political spectrum. Uh, in America, that could not be farther from the truth. America is, especially now, modern America, is maybe the most politically divided it has ever been by far. And politics and <laughs> couldn't be more split. Oh my goodness, don't get me started. We here in Canada know that America is currently experiencing political discourse. Yeah. And because of Canada's clean air, friendly nature, good food, and super hot non-bananas prime minister, <laughs> many Americans have expressed interest in moving here. Americans often threaten to move to Canada when politics at home aren't going their way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, it's kind of meant as a joke, but kind of not a joke. I think a lot of Americans are like, screw this place. When things get heated or it's like election time, they're like, screw this, I'm going to Canada. <laughs> I don't blame them. Because they think Canadians have it better than they do. Yeah. They don't know the half of it. For starters, living in Canada could add years to your life, since the life expectancy wow. is among the highest in the world. Land That's a good metric to measure, like, overall national happiness and, like, contentment is life expectancy. Yeah. Being somewhere in the top 10 to 15 at approximately 81 years old. Although America's not totally horrible there, 78. Canada's, like, three years better on average. Yeah, that's significant. Depending on the source. And their Rocky Mountain, fresh Atlantic, warm Pacific, and cool Arctic airs might be contributing factors. Hmm. Need to take time off after having a baby? No problem. In Canada, you can take almost a year off. What? Oh my goodness. What? Yeah, I mean, in America, you can get like two months off? Two-ish? Uh, if you're a female, if you're if you're a man in America, um, you're huh, you're going to be hard pressed to get much maternity leave at all, if any. You can take like a year. That's incredible, and honestly, the way it should be, right? I mean, you're taking care of a a baby, a child. They need your undivided attention. It's a full time job. It oh, it makes so much sense. Oh. Though, if there are two parents involved. This time would have to be shared, though. Right, but still, that makes sense. But it's still so much better than America, still. You'd still be paid over 50% of your salary. Okay. Also, Canada is a secular country, giving citizens the freedom to follow their own beliefs and lifestyle choices. Cool. Case in point, gay marriage has been legal since 2005, a cool. full decade before the United States. Now yeah, wow. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Same-sex partners can marry legally. Love comes in many forms. A victory against hatred and discrimination. Number three, education. Because no other place offers... Oh, education. America takes a lot of pride in its education, uh, especially higher education. I have many criticisms, <laughs> many, many criticisms of the... Uh, what we would call K through 12, kindergarten through 12th grade, up until you're 18 years old. Um, that education, public education, is highly questionable. <laughs> it, does, it does the job, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but America takes a lot of pride in its universities and colleges. Um, so I wonder what Canada kind of thinks of its education, all of its kinds of education. For such a world of possibilities. As of 2014, Canada was the seventh most popular destination for international students. Cool. Why? Because young people from all over the world travel to Canada specifically to study there. Diversity yeah. is more than just diversity in culture and color it's more about diversity and in interest in canada you can literally be anyone in canada mcgill cool. university located in the city of montreal is not only one of the top universities in the country 
It's also typically ranked within the top 30 universities in the world. Wow. Sweetie. Yeah, America has, you know, Harvard and, you know, stuff like that. All these, what we would call just amazing top tier universities. So we certainly put a lot of pride in that stuff. But it sounds like there's some amazing universities in Canada. I think it said the University of Toronto there earlier. You could still go to McGill, the Harvard of Canada. Oh, McGill, Harvard of Canada. Honestly, I was not aware of that, to be honest. Otherwise, institutions like the University of Toronto and of British Columbia are also praised for their excellence. International yeah. students mostly spend just as much on tuition as where they came from. But for Canadian citizens, tuition costs are insanely low. Yeah, that's another thing. Oh my gosh, this is just like reminding me of all the the things that are so crazy in America that a lot of Americans agree are not good, uh, especially when you compare them to Canada. The tuition in America for its top universities is insane. Insane. 50 grand a semester, I'm sure, for some places, just crazy. Number two, it's peaceful. Went okay. Guy was from Canada, said it was probably peaceful. I wonder how this list defines peaceful, because we already went over the low crime rates and stuff, but peaceful. His fault for getting robbed and apologize for wasting my time. <laughs> oh, Canada. Canadians are pretty laid back on the whole, so they'd much rather do their own thing than pick fights with other countries. Okay, so we really are talking about foreign conflict and stuff like that, okay? What's there to fight about anyhow? Canadians are generally a happy lot, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a country with a major beef against the nation. Hey, I thought you didn't yeah. like- That's true. I can't- <laughs> I can't think of anybody in the world. Not that I'm on the cutting edge of this stuff and aware, but I, I can't even think of anyone on the planet that has a problem with Canada. Anyone. That says something. That says something. Like Canada. Are you kidding? I love Canada. Don't get us wrong. The Canadian military is certainly considered world class. But Canadians grow up in a yeah. country where people of different colors, cultures, religions, and sexualities make up much of the population. More yeah. people living in Canada will have family and other close connections in other countries, leading to more international exchanges and relationships. Oh, yeah. That's another part of the multiculturalism and diversity is that you're getting all these different cultures in Canada. People are, you know, building families there. So Canada is kind of connected to the world in that sense. It's, it's honestly uh, fantastic. If they have to fight, they will. But peace, kindness, and acceptance are for the most part ingrained in them from birth. And yeah. Canada tends to focus their energy more on peacekeeping missions than all out war. You know, hmm. just, you know, when you go over there, just be nice. They're Canadians. You're referring <laughs> to the broad generalization that Canadians are polite? Yes, I am. Before we unveil yeah. our number one <laughs> pick, here are some honorable mentions. Yeah. Uh oh, ketchup chips. What's wrong? Ketchup chips. I think I've heard of this. Why? Why? You know, my respect for Canada was going so high during this video, just up, 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 up. I was ready to move there, and then I was reminded of ketchup-flavored chips. My god, you savages. No. <laughs> they're probably... I, I've never had one. Maybe they're delicious, I don't know. What? I like ketchup chips. Your milk comes in bags. Milk bags. <laughs> Another thing. Your milk is in bags. Crazy. Uh, irredeemable. I can never. No. <laughs> I'm sure I could get used to it, I guess. Bags. We use kilometers. We use liters. We use grams. Okay, the metric system is just straight up better. I'm totally on board for using the metric system. I think it's better than, uh... The imperial system of measurements in every way, you got me. But the height thing never made the transition to the metric system from the old, whatever it's called, system. Number one, <laughs> free healthcare. Free healthcare, of course, and it deserves to be up here, number one. Yeah, yet another major point of contention and disagreement in America. I don't know why. 
Uh, I did a whole video reacting to the Canadian healthcare system. It's incredible. It's wonderful. It's paradise compared to America. <laughs> Americans, sadly, suffer a lot financially and in other ways because of our system of health insurance and whatnot. And Canadians are much better covered. And yeah, it, it stem, this, one, this one stems deep. Uh, certainly a, a truly legitimate reason to move to Canada. Doesn't matter. They have free health care. <laughs> Okay, so the term is rather misleading, since healthcare in Canada isn't free per se. Right, right, right. I, I am aware of this. That's kind of a, a misnomer. It's not like free. And this moose receiving a colonoscopy under Canada's fantastic single payer healthcare system. What yeah. it means is that since Canadians all pitch in towards healthcare through taxes, the cost of healthcare becomes significantly cheaper. Exactly. What the heck are we paying taxes for? If not, for the government to use those taxes for the greater good of the country. And what's one of the best goods for the country is health care. It's, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's times like this, you got to be glad to be a Canuck. The specifics of coverage vary between provinces. But as a rule of thumb, they get free clinics, which, sure, inevitably lead to long wait times. But at least those wait times show that people are taking advantage of the system. Yeah. In some other countries, waiting rooms are empty because medical attention is too expensive. Right. There's also limited coverage for vision and dental care. If we give up our dental plan, I'll have to pay for Lisa's braces. But what it really <laughs> boils down to is that in Canada, the country's health is in the hands of its citizens. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh... It's not like in America where you're scared to get an ambulance. You're scared to go to the emergency room. Some people are. A lot of people are in desperate financial situations. You're nervous about going because what the hospital bill is going to be, you know, it's just madness. Who are therefore able to get the care they deserve for next to nothing. Man, those Canadian doctors bandaged me up, reset my jaw, put my shoulder back in its socket, and they didn't even bill me. Idiots. <laughs> do you agree with our list? Hey, I don't uh, suppose you'd want to move to Canada. I do. <coughs> I do agree. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Canada? For more informative top tens. Oh, all of it. All of it is my favorite. Oh, man. So this was by Watch Mojo. Yeah, I like them. I liked this video. Wow. Uh, not surprisingly to me. This video only reaffirmed what I already believed about Canada, that it's a pretty fantastic place to live. Um, that's what I was saying. I, it's not a troll. I think a lot of Americans sh are somewhat serious when they're like, screw this, I'm moving to Canada. And they haven't even seen half of what I've seen about Canada. Um, the more you look into it from an American's point of, an American's point of view, it's just like better. It affirms everything that we kind of know about Canada. And then it's just like so much more, so much better. Like all the beauty and natural resources. That's just like something a lot of Americans aren't aware of. But it's just like, oh, even better. The, the population, the hockey, <laughs> the politics that are much more civil. Oh my goodness. Education's great. Peaceful, man. It just sounds great, man. Is it too good to be true? Does this place even exist, Canada? <laughs> anyway, uh, I enjoyed that a lot. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture and news and places, things I've never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.